Hey guys, welcome to Jason Whiskey Wise with myself, Jason, bringing you whiskey review number 30. We're going to feature a whiskey from travel retail, the Lafroig Four Oak. So this is part of the new releases from Lafroig to update the travel retail whiskeys. We've got the Lafroig Passport over there for my square foot and Isla and the Four Oak in itself. And as the name states, they do use four different oak casks. And I've poured myself a dram pre-video just to let it settle for a period of time. So in my review style structure, um, actually I'll quickly just cover, as you can hear the burrs outside, um, two expressions for Lafroig. One is the Four Oak, which is sort of the new uh, one for travel retail. And the second one is the 1815 Legacy Edition, which is to celebrate 200 years of the malt masters and master distillers at the Lafroig Distillery. So the Four Oak, is a, as my review style goes, is a non-age stated whiskey, so we don't know the age of it, um, but as many whiskies from Lafroig's range are all non-age stated, um, you can imagine that's what we're gonna get in a minute. So in terms of the ABV, it is bottled at 40% ABV. Um, the cast selection, and I'm gonna go through them, are the X bourbon barrels, the quarter casks, um, the virgin American oak, and the European oak hogsheads. So I believe the European oak hogsheads are sherry casks as uh, Lafroig have used them in the past in the PX cask. So the distillery is the Lafroig distillery, which I'll probably put a picture of over here and it's from Beam Centauri and they're located in Isla in Scotland. So you can go and check them out. If you're going to Isla for a trip, you'll know exactly where the distillery is. Now the price point of view, this is a one liter bottle was 52.99. So it's in that price range. A lot of whiskeys nowadays are priced at 50 pounds. Now in exclusivity wise, yes, it is completely exclusive. It is only available in travel retail. So if you are traveling via cruise, boat, plane, I don't know if trains do duty free, but solely travel retail. And in terms of caramel coloring, they actually don't state if they use E150A. So I believe this whiskey is completely natural color. So let's next move into the assessment of the whiskey. I'm gonna hold that up in front of the camera. Uh, hopefully you can see that if it uh, auto focuses off my face. Um, it looks quite like a light ambery color. So I'm gonna go with a uh, bright amber because it doesn't look too dark and you can't see too much of fainter, darker hues in this whiskey. So next up, let's assess the nose. So first impressions off the nose, I'm picking out that very distinctive, peaty, earthy, sort of smoky character. And right behind that, distinctively, a very strong sea salt or coastal breeze that just sort of, it's like after a storm, you get that sort of salty character in the air. That's what I'm picking out on this one. Right behind that, a nice vanilla note, which seems to linger around the palate. And because I've left this for a little period of time, I'm picking out a very nice sort of uh, overripe baked apples and pears, embarking a slight fruitier note on this nose. Very nice. And I'll actually mention at the end of the video exactly what happens when you add a drop or two of water. So, into the palate next. First impressions of the first tasting. The palate starts off quite light, medium in texture, develops, but you're instantly greeted by that peaty, earthy smoke, which just wants to make itself very well known. Then behind that, an introduction of spices in terms of cloves and white pepper, very powerful. And then you get a nice iodine sort of note that just comes right behind it, followed by sort of toasted vanilla. So quite a bit going on in the palate on this one. I'm gonna have another tasting because I feel there's a little bit more to uncover. So after the second tasting, I'm picking out a little bit more of that fruitier aspect. Reminds me of sort of, what's those like burnt plums, but more towards the plum skins, giving that slight bitter aspect to it. And then right behind that, you're getting a mixture of stewed red apples and red pears, working their way together as it ends on a slightly burnt oak character. I'd say more towards even a bit of burnt oak and a bit of burnt rubber. So uh, quite interesting uh, palette profile on this one. We're gonna move now next into the assessment of the finish and we'll conclude our review. So into the finish for this whiskey, a very nice creamy salted caramel pudding 
with an extra sprinkling of uh, sea salt so that gives it a very nice salty character to it. Sort of reminds me also like you've added flakes of seaweed which is a really unusual um, two things to put together with a very vibrant body of smoky peaty uh, note that just remains quite consistent. It doesn't really lighten up at all. It doesn't really get too powerful. It remains very consistent throughout the nose all the way to the finish of this whiskey. So quite a lot going on in this whiskey, but at the same time, very unusual flavors that are normally never paired together. Now, if you do add water, like I will mention, um, it does give it, it takes that peaty earthy smoke character and it turns it into like a burnt rubbery note, just for your knowledge in uh, if you do add water. But overall, I'm gonna give my rating. And this is, I'm gonna compare this actually to its other counterparts. So I'm gonna give it an 86 out of 100. The reason behind that is because it does have a very lovely vibrant body of smoke that does remain consistent. Even if you add water, it just goes to a rubbery note. Um, but it does have a fairly nice complexity. The um, sort of input from each of the different casks used does give its character with the spice, with the sort of fruity notes, the vanilla. Uh, the only downside, in my opinion, is the ABV. It's bottled at 40% ABV, and normally even the, its comparison, well, the 1815 Legacy is bottled at 48%, so it's a much higher ABV. So I felt, you know, you could have left it natural. Um, but in terms of price comparison, is it value for money? You do have the Triple Wood, which is... I think around about 40, sorry, 58 pounds or 54 pounds when I last saw it. And then you have, which is domestic market, and you have the travel retail QA cask, which is priced at around about four, uh, 51 pounds. So you've got two whiskeys again in that 50 bracket. This one's giving you that extra cask, extra complexity. And if you want to have that little burnt rubber note, you add water. If you want to keep it an earthy, peaty note, you just keep it how it is with the whiskey itself. So on that note, I believe, um, personally for myself, I don't need any water to it. Uh, I feel it's a very nice whiskey in itself with a nice complexity, and that's why I'm giving it 86 out of 100. So let me know what you guys think. If you have tried the uh, Four Oak or if you've tried any of the Laphroaig Travel Retail range, I will also feature the 1815 Legacy Edition when I pick up myself a bottle. But on that note, I'm going to wrap the review up here. Be sure to check out some of my recent reviews over here. Click my subscribe button if you haven't already uh, to be subscribed and stay up to date with the channel. But this has been Jason from Whiskey Wise, and I'll catch you all for the next video.